Hello, and welcome to Next Level Data. We are here to enhance professional baseball players by a data-driven approach to in-game strategy. We hope that you enjoyed our first video of Justin Dunn last week, and we're excited for our next breakdown. We'll be analyzing a new player every Friday, so be sure to come back then to check out who's next. Always feel free to leave your questions in the comment section, as I'll do my best to answer them. Now, for today's player, we're going to break down another former top 100 prospect who is a right-handed pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. And he bats with one out. There, fire set up. And he. And that was tipped and caught. Make up one or two innings at a time. Tuki Toussaint was drafted in 2014, taken with the 16th overall pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Traded to the Braves a little over a year after he was drafted by the Diamondbacks in 2015, Toussaint made his big league debut in August of 2018 after dominating double and triple A that year. Toussaint has struggled to stay in the big leagues for the past three seasons and has pitched out of the bullpen mostly, despite an above average offering of pitches that profile him as a starter. Let's look into some possible solutions that could make Tuki an impact big leaguer. Toussaint threw five pitches in 2020, a four-seam fastball, a sinker, a split finger, a curveball, and a slider. If you remember from our first video, these spin rates are either on par with Major League Average or slightly better. I'll also point out that despite Toussaint's struggles in the big leagues, his success isn't directly correlated to his pure stuff or the quality of each of his individual pitches, as we'll see. As we dive into Toussaint's repertoire, it's obvious that he features some truly nasty pitches, but we'll need to refine some things in order to get the most out of his stuff. To give an idea, these are the pitchers the Baseball Savant page compares Tukey's stuff to by default, based on a few things, including pitch velocity and movement. I'm not saying Toussaint should be producing like a Scherzer or Flaherty, but I do think this is telling to how much potential Tukey has. So let's look into his offering to learn more. Toussaint features two fastballs, but mainly throws his four-seamer while only using his sinker around 5% of the time. These numbers don't look great for either pitch, but these struggles most likely coincide with what has been Toussaint's Achilles heel in the big leagues. Most anybody can tell that Toussaint has struggled with commanding his fastball throughout his time up with the Braves. But I want to dive into where he has struggled locating and why that is the case. To show where Toussaint should be, in 2020 he only threw his four-seamer in the zone 47% of the time and his sinker in the zone only 40% of the time. Scherzer and Flaherty, on the other hand, threw their four-seamers in the zone 58 and 57 percent of the time in 2020. We see here a big difference in fastball usage heat map between Toussaint and his comparisons. This should show how important fastball command could be for Toussaint. So now the million dollar question is, how do we get Toussaint to start filling up the zone more with his fastball? Well first we have to identify the problem or problems that are at hand. Being that I'm more of an analyst and not a coach, I won't be diving into any mechanical adjustments Toussaint might need to make. Although I do recommend that to be done in order for the best solution, I'll stick to what the numbers tell me in order to show the data side of Tucson's struggles. At first glance, I thought Tucson may just be tiptoeing around hitters with his fastball location, fearing what might happen if big leaguers were able to get a pitch in the strike zone. But when diving into the numbers, we see some consistencies that reveal what may be causing this lack of fastball command. Let's start with this chart of the strike zone from the catcher's perspective. This is a graphic of the total amount of fastballs thrown by Tucson in 2020. As we can see here, Toussaint missed a lot, arm side and up, and this is most likely an indicator that he had trouble getting on top of the baseball at release, which caused the pitch to run up and in, as seen in this graphic. When saying Toussaint is not getting on top of the baseball, this could be because of a plethora of reasons. It might be that he's releasing the ball too early, it could be that his arm isn't in the right position throughout his delivery, or it may be something completely different. Whatever it is though, Toussaint isn't able to drive the pitch where he wants to, when needed. In today's game, the four-seamer up in the zone is a pitch that is becoming more widely used and may lead some to believe that Tucson is purposely targeting this area to create swings and misses underneath the ball. And although this could be something Tucson does down the road, all numbers point to that not being the case in 2020, as Tucson had below average vertical break, which is a key component of a fastball to play up in the zone, and averaged an active spin percentage of 84, which is not ideal for targeting this area either. This moves me to my next point about Tucson's fastball which is about the active spin. As mentioned, Tucson averaged 84% active spin on his fastball in 2020, which if you remember in the first video, means that only 84% of the spin on each fastball thrown directly correlated to the movement of the pitch. Remember, for fastballs, as active spin goes up, vertical break goes down. 
making the pitch carry more and creating a rising effect to the hitter. Both Toussaint's efficiency and command most likely go hand in hand. If Toussaint is able to stay on top of the baseball, it would almost certainly increase his active spin as well, opening up a possibility for him to use a pitch up in the zone as a weapon rather than a pitch that's thrown there as a mistake. Toussaint's sinker, which I didn't dive into, had some damage done upon it in 2020, but I do believe it can be an effective pitch eventually because of the seam-shifted wake involved. Hang with me as we will wrap back around to this topic later in the episode. All in all, I believe that Tucson's four-seamer could be the key to his success in the big leagues, but let's move on to his off-speed offerings to see how Tucson can further his repertoire. In my opinion, Tucson's best pitch is his split finger. As we can see here, opponents didn't do much with Tucson's split finger in 2020. The movement and spin rate on this pitch are ideal, and the hitter's swings tell us all we need to know about it. This is a heat map of opponent's batting average versus Tucson's split finger in 2020. We see here that as long as Tucson can keep this pitch out of the heart of the plate, he should see success as no one hit over 200 when the pitch was in any other quadrant. My only idea for this pitch would be to throw it more. Tucson only used it around 20% of the time last year, so I believe it would be beneficial to bump up its usage rate to around 30% for 2021. One way of implementing using the split finger more would be to throw the pitch more when behind in the count. This may seem backwards, but the split finger has a 55% swing and miss rate when Toussaint is behind in the count and hitters may be expecting a fastball. Toussaint's split finger is arguably his best pitch, and I would love to see him use it more in 2021. Now let's move on to Toussaint's breaking pitches. Toussaint throws a curveball and a slider as breaking pitches. The curveball was a solid pitch for Toussaint in 2020, as we see here, but I did want to point out a few things that could help bring Toussaint's curve closer to the potential 70 grade it received in his amateur days. First, I would encourage Toussaint to throw his curveball around the strike zone more often. We see here Toussaint is more times than not starting the pitch in the middle of the zone to entice hitters to chase it out of the zone. Toussaint should not only use it as a chase pitch, but as a pitch to attack the zone with in all counts. After all, the pitch had a 47% whiff rate in 2020 and is a true weapon for him. Now on to Toussaint's second breaking pitch. Toussaint threw a slider for the first time in the big leagues in 2020, but didn't see great results from the pitch. My guess for this lack of success is most likely rooted in the specific shape of Toussaint's slider. There are a couple things to note when looking at the shape of this pitch. First is the spin direction of his slider. We didn't get into spin direction, or sometimes called tilt, last week, but it's essentially the measurement of direction to how and where the ball is spinning. In this case, and in most cases, it's measured by time on a clock. You can see here from the pitcher's perspective which pitches move in which direction. And logically, it makes sense if you factor in what pitch you're looking at. Fastballs naturally move slightly arm side, curveballs break down and away, and sliders break glove side. What I want to focus on, though, is the difference in Toussaint's observed movement of the pitch versus his inferred movement, or in this case called spin-based movement. We won't dive too deep into this, but the topic at play here has been coined seam-shifted wake, which in layman's terms means the effect the irregularity of the seams on the baseball may have on the movement of the pitch. On a quick side note, to tie things together, Toussaint's sinker also has seam-shifted wake, which is why I never suggested axing it from his repertoire despite poor production. Having seam-shifted wake on these pitches could be used to Toussaint's advantage, as it often correlates to late break. This could be helpful for him, both with the sinker and slider, if corralled correctly. But for the slider specifically, he needs to iron out some things first in order to make the pitch more effective and to possibly fully tap into the seam-shifted weight movement his ball possesses. Toussaint's slider is essentially stuck in no man's land. He possesses average spin, but doesn't get great movement out of the pitch, nor does he throw it particularly hard, averaging 85 miles per hour. My suggestion for Toussaint, if he wanted to still have another breaking pitch, is to rebrand it by focusing on the shape of the pitch to be more like a cutter and to throw it in the 89 to 90 mile per hour range. Toussaint could also convert the pitch into a slider that features more horizontal break, but that may prove to be a more difficult and time consuming task than shifting it into a cutter. In my opinion, I believe Toussaint can still be a very effective pitcher without having a slider. It may be one less thing to worry about in a young player's mind as well. In addition, Toussaint may already have what most believe to be an above average curveball, so I don't think it would be a terrible idea for him to stick to just that as a breaking pitch. Before we go, let's summarize what I believe Toussaint should be drawing attention to in 2021. Number one, fastball command. Toussaint needs to get on top of the baseball in order to drive the pitch to his desired location rather than allowing it to run up and in on him. 
This will also increase the life Tucson's fastball has to the hitter's eye by increasing spin efficiency, or active spin. As mentioned earlier, I believe refining his fastball command could pay huge dividends for Tucson and take his game to the next level. Number two, pitch mix. I believe Toussaint would greatly benefit from throwing his better pitches more. Until his slider and sinker are pitches that can be used as weapons, I believe a pitch percentage mix around 35% fastball, 30% split finger, and 30% curveball would keep hitters off balance and allow Toussaint to throw his best out-inducing pitches more. Number three, simplification. Lastly, I think simplifying everything could provide some steadiness in the big leagues for Toussaint. From pitch mix and arsenal, to him possibly doing away with his habit of Marcus Stroman as timing adjustments in 2020, I think Toussaint would be best suited to simplify things and directly attack hitters with his pure stuff. Sometimes, less can be more for young players. I've been following Toussaint since he was in the travel ball circuit as a 17-year-old, and he's always had the potential to be an above-average big leaguer. I'm hoping 2021 can be Toussaint's breakout year and propel him to some stability in the big leagues. I look forward to seeing him perform in an exciting organization this year, and best of luck to him and the Braves. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Also, feel free to follow us on socials at NXTLVLData. Thanks for watching.